Okay, so let's start by talking about the simplest form of functional interface, which is the predicate. So there are, uh, again, five of them we're going to talk about, starting with predicate. Predicate's the simplest one. So a predicate is an interface that performs a test that returns true or false. So as you can see, see here, a predicate is a generic interface that's parameterized by a single reference type. So it's predicate of t, where t could be some type, whatever it might need to be. And you'll see that there's also a single method called test. And it's, of course, it's an abstract method, which means that you have to provide an implementation of the predicate and fill in what it means to do this test. And as you can see, the test method takes an object of type t, which is the parameter, does some kind of evaluation, and returns true or false. OK, so pretty straightforward. Again, you can see why it's the simplest one. The signature of the abstract method of the functional interface, in other words, you know, the signature being takes an object of type t and returns a Boolean, is called the function description. You can read more about that down in this link. And this describes, as the term implies, the signature of the lambda expression. And, and you'll see in a second why I'm making a big deal about this, because we're going to end up using magic type deduction mechanisms in Java 8 and beyond to let you write lambda expressions or, or method references where you can avoid having to specifically define an anonymous inner class with a specific method named test. So let's take a look at a simple example. This is in my EX10 folder in the Java 8 repository. And um, this will illustrate a couple of interesting things. One of the things it's going to show is it's going to show how to use one of the cool methods on concurrent hash map. Concurrent hash map, as you're probably aware, is a, is a uh, container, a collection of the, in the Java Collections framework that can do hash operations to get and put values efficiently into a map in a way that will be thread safe, meaning if multiple threads are trying to get and put items into the map at the same time, the map itself handles any synchronization required in order to ensure you get atomic, consistent, and properly ordered behavior. And just for kicks, because it's fun, uh, I use an example where we're going to make a concurrent hash map that's going to map the names of the three stooges, Larry, Curly, and Moe, along with some hypothetical, whimsical estimation of their IQ. So if you've never seen the Three Stooges, you really missed something. You really missed something. I won't say what, what you've missed, but you missed something. So you should read more about the Three Stooges. It was a vaudeville slapstick comedy act that they made a lot of short movies back in the, the 40s, I think, that were uh, very, very humorous in some strange way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a map of the Stooges. That's what this little factory method does. And it maps their names to their IQs. And then we're going to do some stuff. We're going to print out the map, and we're going to remove some items, and then we're going to print the map out again. So what I want to focus on here is this method called remove if. And what remove if works on, as you can see here, is it takes the IQ map, gets its entry set. The entry set is simply the set of key value pairs in the map. And what it's going to do is it's going to remove any entry in the map whose value, whose IQ, is less than or equal to 100. So this is what's called a predicate lambda that tells the remove if method to remove all entries that have an IQ, have a value of less than or equal to 100. So that'll get rid of um, poor Larry and poor Curly, but, but Mo will stick around because he was always the smartest of the three stooges. OK, so first of all, take a look at that, uh, that syntax there. What it's saying here is remove any entry in this entry set if the value of the entry is less than or equal to 100. And you'll notice this, this is what's called a lambda expression. There is no actual reference to a method called test. And that's because this is a lambda expression, and it's got a function descriptor that matches the signature for this particular functional interface. So to try to make this a little bit more clear, I'll kind of walk through this step by step. So this lambda you see here implements the abstract test method shown up here. And that test method, of course, is defined in the predicate interface. And it implements it directly in line. In this particular context, entry 
is shorthand for open paren entry set less than string comma integer greater than entry close paren. And you don't have to, you could write that verbose expression if you chose, that would be a bit more explicit, but you don't need to. You can instead let the Java 8 type inference deduce that type information for you. So this is another nice feature that came with Java 8. It's able to do type inference or type deduction, allowing you to write more concise code. If you uh, use an Android Studio or IntelliJ or whatnot and you put your mouse over here, it'll give you an option to shift back and forth between this more verbose form and the more concise form. Now, so that's how you call the, that's how you pass a lambda expression to remove if. Let's take a look at how remove if is actually defined. So now we're kind of looking at the implementation. And the implementation is defined in the collection interface. And one of the things you'll note with Java 8, which is a little different from earlier versions of Java, is that interfaces can now have default method implementations. Before, if you recall earlier versions of Java, an interface could only have method declarations, but could not have method definitions. But with Java 8, you can now have default methods. And I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that later, but it's, it's really cool and it makes life a lot easier. So here's what remove if looks like. You can see it takes a parameter of type predicate that we call filter here. And what we're going to do, or what it does, this is the implementation of remove if from the Java source code. It's going to iterate through every element in the map, and it's going to see whether or not the element, then each element matches that filter. And if it does match, it removes it. So remove if means remove if there's a match. So again, default methods. This allows you to be able to keep your interfaces the same and then ha add new features to them without breaking existing code, which is a really, really nice feature. So you can read more about default methods here. This funny syntax, the question mark super E, is something that's called a lower bounded wildcard that says that the actual type that's passed in when you instantiate the, 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 the map or the collection has to be a specific type or a super type of that type. In other words, a parent of that type. Don't worry too much about that right now. It's just syntax. Here's what this predicate is bound to in the example that we're looking at. So entry arrow, entry dot get value less than 100. That's the value that's going to be bound as this parameter. So this funny lambda expression is actually going to turn into predicate question mark super E filter when we look at the implementation of the code. So remember we talked about binding, that's what gets bound to it. And then if you look in terms of the implementation of this stuff, you can see that what happens here is that what it's going to do is it's going to the implementation is going to say filter.test, because remember there's a, there's a test method that is defined on a predicate. And that test turns into this, if each.next.getValue less than or equal to 100. So that's actually what the code is that's called at runtime. That's the semantics, the effective semantics of it. And that just expands each next and then does this comparison. So essentially what we're doing here is we're, we're replacing the filter.test with whatever is passed in as the lambda to the, to the method, to the remove if method. So it's a little bit weird at first because it's like, what the heck? This looks so implicit. But what's really happening is that this has to match the function description of the predicate interface. And then in the implementation, it's going to go ahead and, and do whatever we pass in as that, as that test. OK. Um, it's also possible to compose predicates together. This is kind of cool. So you can actually create two predicate objects and then compose them. So let's ha see how we might do that. So here we're going to go ahead. This is a, just another variant of this example. We make our IQ map like we did before. And now we're going to make ourselves a predicate we call low IQ, where that's going to have the lambda expression entry dot get value less than or equal to 100. And then we're also going to define another predicate we call curly. And in this case, we're going to define a uh, lambda expression where we're going to 
get the key from the entry and determine whether it equals curly. So this will return true if, if the uh, particular entry is cr the curly entry. So this one's going to look at the value to see if the IQ is less than 100. This one will check to see whether the key equals curly. And then we can do this. We can say IQ map dot entry set remove if low IQ dot and curly. So what that's saying is remove an item from the map if it's the low IQ entry and, which is looking at the value in this case, and it matches the curly key. So that's an example of composing things together using the and operation. So that's pretty cool.